Welcome back to the flipped classroom. Our topic today is exponential equations with a little twist. They have unlike bases. So we're actually going to start off with a review problem from last week where we could get a common base. All right, so let's just call this a little review. And we'll start with 8 to the x equals 4 to the x minus 1. Now our goal is to get, like I just said, common bases. The same base on this side and the same base on this side. So since I see the number 4, I'm going to use 4 and try it in my head here. 4 to the first is 4. That works great. But 4 squared is 16. So a base of 4 won't work. Well, hopefully you've already, you're have already a step ahead of me and know what base I want to use. I actually need to use 2. And I can say 8 is equivalent to 2 cubed. And I think you'd agree with that. So I'm going to kill the 8, replace it with 2 cubed, but i got to keep that x up there. And I'm going to kill the 4 because I can rewrite that as 2 squared. All right, those are equivalent, but I didn't get rid of that x minus 1. We've got to keep her there. Now, once we had common bases, recall, I could really just kill those bases and set my two exponents equal to each other. So I've got 3x equals... 2x minus 2. Then, of course, I just want to solve for x, subtract my 2x, and x equals negative 2. So that's what we did last week. We tried to get these exponential equations to have a common base. Well, unfortunately, as you've probably guessed, not all exponential equations can be expressed in terms of a common base. It's just not possible. Let me give you an example where that's certainly not going to happen. Let's say 5 to the x equals 7. Okay, so you could be thinking in your head, well, 5 to the first is 5, that's great, but 5 squared is 25, so it's not even possible to get a common base. So what the heck are we going to do? Well, we're going to use something called logarithms. So kind of an exciting word to say. So go ahead and take a minute and copy down the steps um, that we use to solve exponential equations with an uncommon base. All right, so again, the steps to solving exponential equations without a common base. First, isolate the exponential expression. And we've used this term isolate many times this year, whether it's isolate the radical, isolate the absolute value. We're always trying to get what we're solving for by itself. Second, take the common log or the natural log of both sides. Now, it doesn't matter what you choose, but you do need to be consistent on both sides. So either common log on both or natural log on both. And the third and final step is just to solve for the variable. You might have to add, subtract, multiply, whatever, to get the variable by itself. Now, lastly, um, we do want to make sure we use one of our log properties that we talked about the other day. And the most important property that we're probably going to use here is law 3. And that one said the log of x to the m is equal to m log x. Okay, so if you recall, that property said you are fair to take that exponent and bring it down in front. All right, so let's keep moving on. Let me go back to that example, that 5 to the x equals 7, and we're going to solve this using logarithms. Now, I'm actually going to split it up and solve it twice, uh, one using common logs, and one using natural logs. Okay, so 5 to the x equals 7. And we're just going to run through the steps together here. So step 1 said isolate the exponential expression. Well, you can see the base and exponent, that's what we're talking about, the base that's attached to the exponent, is by itself. There's nothing in front of it being added, multiplied, subtracted, it's already by itself, so step one is done. Step two, take the common log or natural log of both sides. Well, I'm going to start with the common log. So all I'm going to do is simply write down log in front of this side, and always balance your equation, write down log in front of this side. Now, remember there's another step here. You have to apply one of the properties, and that's law three that says take this exponent and bring it down in front. So I'm going to get x log five equals log seven. Now, if you're feeling really comfortable with those exponents and you can do it all in one step, by all means, you could have rewritten this as x log 5 in that first step. 
just another step or two to go here. If I read this out loud, it says x times log 5. So in order for me to get x by itself, I'm just going to divide both sides by log 5. Now, by no means is this something you should be able to do in your head. You should go straight to your calculator at this point and type this in. Uh, quick little tips, if you got the updated TI-84 and you hit your alpha y equals, it pulls up the fraction button for you and you can type in log 7 divided by log 5. If you have the older calculator, that TI-83, you just have to be real careful with parentheses. When you type in log, it's going to open a parenthesis, and after you hit the 7 button, make sure you close the parenthesis. Divided by log, it'll open one, type in your 5, make sure you close it. Now these are almost always going to turn out to be these horrible, ugly decimals. And for the sake of, you know, these notes here, we're just going to round to three decimal places. Uh, so I get 1.209. All right, now I'm going to go backwards a little here, and I'm going to solve the same problem using natural logs. So I've got my 5 to the x equals 7. Instead of throwing that common log on both sides, I'm just going to use natural log. 5 to the x equals the natural log of 7. Watch that property. Bring that x down in front. So you'll notice nothing's changed. It still says x times the ln of 5, so I'm going to divide over the ln of 5. And when I type that in, um, obviously use ln and watch those parentheses again, I get 1.209. In the end, I get that exact same answer. Now the intermediate steps are a little different, but your calculator is kind of doing all the work, so we didn't notice the difference on paper. Let's go ahead and try a second example. Okay, uh, Number 2. 3 to the 2x plus 1 equals 15. Now, you'll notice there's more than just an x hanging up in that exponent. There's a 2x plus 1. Um, and I, I want to make sure on every paper we are putting parentheses around that exponent. That's a huge deal. We need to keep the 2x plus 1 grouped together at all times. So, running through those three steps we had, my goal is to make sure the base and exponent are together, and they are. Again, there's nobody in front or behind it, so step 1 is done. And you can either take the common log or natural log of both sides. I'm going to use natural log. So I'm going to say the ln of 3 to the 2x plus 1, use those parentheses, equals the natural log of 15. Okay. Um, again, just make sure I have those parentheses in there. And using my law property 3, I'm going to bring that exponent down in front. 2x plus 1, notice it's still in parentheses, ln of 3 equals the ln of 15. All right, now as I read this out loud, it's this quantity times the ln of 3. So my goal is eventually to get to this x, so I read times, I'm going to divide both sides by the ln of 3, which kills that. And then on this side, I'm just left with the 2x plus 1. Now on this side, again, hopefully that calculator's handy. We're going to do a lot of calculator action here. When you type in the ln of 15 divided by the ln of 3, you're going to get some ugly decimal again. I've got 2.46497, blah, blah, blah. You absolutely cannot round that answer. So what we want to practice is storing this into alpha A or alpha B. Um, and we're going to use this store button a million times in the next week. So... I've got a picture of my calculator screen here, a little bigger than I thought, um, but you'll notice I did my ln of 15 divided by the ln of 3 right here. I've got this ugly decimal, and then I'm storing that into alpha A. So if you've forgotten how to store, once this number's on your screen here, the store button, I'll circle for you here, and then you're going to hit alpha, and A is right underneath it. And once you've done that, hit enter, and it will now be in there. Anytime you hit A, it's there for you. Okay, so I'm going to actually set this equation equal to A. I do not want to write all those decimals down. All right, uh, at this point, my goal is to get x by itself, so it's just a very basic linear equation here. I'm going to subtract 1, so I've got 2x equals, and I am literally typing in A minus 1 on my calculator. So hit your alpha A minus 1, and you should get another ugly decimal. 
Uh, it's like 1.4649, blah, blah, blah. Okay, and I'm going to store that into alpha B. Okay, so hit that store button, alpha B. And now my last step is just to divide both sides by 2. So I, again, I'm literally typing in B divided by 2. And I get final answers. So this is fair game to round. 0.732. Okay, so a lot of calculator technique, a lot of storing. Um, hopefully almost everybody's familiar with it. If you're not, again, feel free to ask some questions tomorrow. All right, let's get example three here. We try to add an extra step in. Um, 150e to the 0.05x equals 340. All right. So step one, again, I want that base and exponent to be by itself. And you know, our equations are gonna start to look more like this. So hopefully you can see that this 150 is not the base or the exponent. And I want you to box that in, your base and your exponent together. That is what you are isolating, this base with this exponent only. So step one, to get that by itself, I need to boot this 150 over to the other side. And hopefully you understand that we're multiplying those. So to get rid of 150, I'm just going to divide each side by 150. Okay, so I've got e to the 0.05x equals, now when I type this in, again, I get this ugly decimal, 2.26 repeating. If it does not terminate or does not end, you need to store. So I am taking this number that I got in my calculator, I'm hitting that store, whoopsie, I'm hitting that store button, and then I'm hitting alpha A. I'm storing it into A. So I am going to refer to this as A now. It is in my calculator as A. All right, moving on. Now that my base and exponent are together, I'm going to wrap my exponent in parentheses, and I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. So the ln of e to the 0.05x, keep that in parentheses, equals the ln of A. Use my log properties, I'm going to bring that 0.05x down in front. ln of e equals the ln of a. Okay, if I read it out loud, it says 0.05x times ln of e. So to get rid of the ln of e, I'm going to divide it out. So I've got my 0.05x equals... So I'm literally hitting A on my calculator now. ln of A divided by ln of E. And remember, E is a number on your calculator. E is a constant. Um, just to be clear, I get 0.8183, and I'm storing that into alpha B. So again, I've got like 0.818, blah, 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 some crazy repeating number. So I'm storing that into B. And lastly, to get X by itself, I'm just going to divide both sides by 0.05. And I believe you should get, oops, x equals 16.366. Okay. Uh, so there you have it. We had another exponential equation where we actually had to get that uh, base and exponent isolated first. Mm -hmm. So I've just got two more examples for you. Stay with me. Um, they're going to add another step or two. And let's give them a whirl. Number four. to the x minus 12 minus 2 equals 12. All right, so running through my steps. Are the base and exponent, this exponential, isolated? Well, hopefully you're saying no. There's a 2 on this side, so I've got to kick him out. Now, I'm not going to divide by 2 because it says minus 2. So hopefully some common sense there tells you to add 2 to both sides first. So 4, wrap that exponent in parentheses equals 14. Now that your base and exponent are by themselves together, you can either take the common log or natural log. I'm going to go common log this time. So I'm going to say the log of 4 to the x minus 12 equals log of 14. Okay, apply that property, log property, bring the exponent down in front. Watch those parentheses. All right, and my goal here is just to eventually get that x by itself, but it's this quantity times the log of 4. 
So to move over that log of 4, I'm just going to divide it over. Divide it on this side. Kill those. I've got x minus 12 equals... Again, I get some 1.9036 number. I'm hitting store into alpha A. And then my last step, of course, is just to add over the 12. Uh, so I get x equals, and hopefully you're double checking on your calculator so you're ready to go tomorrow, 13.904 to the nearest three decimal places. All right, well, we've made it to our last example, number five. Uh, here we go. 100, oops, I'm sorry, six times two to the x plus three equals 30. You know what? Scratch that. I want to add another step in there. Well, sorry about that. Uh, let's say 6 times 2 to the x plus 3 plus 2 equals 30. All right, this is probably as ugly as it's going to get. We might as well dive right into it. Um, so let's use this example for our last one here instead. All right, go ahead and put that box around the base and the exponent. All right, this is what my goal is to isolate, the base and the exponent. I have to get rid of everybody else first before I can use common log or natural log. Now, it's extremely important whether you move the 6 or 2 over first. And if I said to you, you know, 4x plus 1 equals 5, hopefully you would say move over the 1 first. Okay, we always want to add or subtract first. So... I want to subtract the 2 first from both sides. So I'm going to get 6 times 2 to the x plus 3 equals 28. Now again, I'm just going to box in my base and exponent because again, I have to get that alone first. I cannot distribute this 6 through. That is not allowed, not legal. Okay, These are glued together, this base and exponent. This exponent is only on the 2. Uh, so next up, I'll divide both sides by 6 to get rid of that 6. So I've got 2, put that exponent in parentheses, the x plus 3, equals, and I'm getting some ugly decimal when I divide 28 by 6, uh, 4.666, repeating. So I'm going to store that into alpha A. So again, hit your store button, alpha A. All right, now that we've finally gotten to where we need to be, We've got the exponent and the base together alone. I can take the common or natural log of both sides. So since our last problem, go ahead, give it a whirl, try it on your own, and see if we end up getting the same answer. Uh, that'll, whoopsie, that'll kill that, so I've got x plus 3 equals, I'm going to guess this is some ugly number again, Let's see I'm getting 2.2239 blah blah blah, I'm going to call that b, so I'm storing this in alpha b, and then I'm going to subtract 3. So I end up with x equals negative 0.778. And there you have it. That's our lesson on exponential equations with unlike bases. So bring that calculator with you tomorrow, and we look forward to seeing you then. Have a great night.